Uh, my name's Mario, and um, I know some of you here, but not most of you. Uh, and I was asked to come along um, just to kind of share my experience, I suppose, applying for um, promotion to uh, level E last year, which um, was successful, which is um, why I'm here. So this is next, is it? Okay, just really quickly, um, in case you're wondering um, who I am and what I do, um, so I started working at the uni in mid-2001, so it's been a while now. Um, I still coordinate human biology. When I started, that was my primary job. And it's actually interesting, because I was thinking the other day, I was hired to help coordinate a first year course called human biology, because the enrolment numbers went from 50 to 100 in the space of two years. And everybody was stressed out and dying. And right now we have 550 students in the class and there's still just two of us. So um, I'm not sure why we don't have five or six coordinators, but um, there goes that. Um, uh, Pascal, are you listening? No. Um, 2015, um, the uh, university or the faculty asked me to be, um, so I'm from the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences, obviously, and they asked me to be the Stephen Cole Elder Fellow. Um, which I did, and that kind of ended uh, late last year. Um, at the moment, I've um, just started a kind of newish position in the faculty as director of e-learning as well. Um, and my application was um, an education specialist application, so a little bit um, different from the applications that some of you will probably um, put in if you're uh, kind of combo teaching research or a research um, focused um, application. And there are lots of examples on the website anyway of all of the various different types. Um, if you wanted to see my promotion history when I was here last year, um, the year I think the person showed that or the year before that. Um, if, so it's kind of fairly steady, it's about four or five years. Um, if you're wondering why I applied for a promotion at level E um, after just two years at level D, um, there's probably a couple of reasons for that. Um, I think um, I was involved in um, a couple of really big projects um, uh, during this period. Uh, one was the development of the university's first uh, MOOC um, for edX. So I was the course lead for that, our first MOOC. And that kind of generated a whole bunch of evidence and um, a whole bunch of connections and some really um, useful things that I thought would make for a, a good application for promotion. And um, probably the main reason actually though is I just found myself when I was promoted to associate professor sitting in meetings and in boards and being asked by executive dean to take on various jobs and duties. And when I looked around, uh, everybody sitting at the table next to me was a professor. So I thought, well, I should be a professor as well if you're asking me to um, uh, you know, chair the reimagining of an entire program or if you're asking me to sit on a particular university board and contribute. Um, so that's why and um, yeah, was thrilled that it was a success. So um, thanks for the invite. Uh, I'm sure you've got lots of questions and they're being <laughs> answered today. Um, maybe you're after some tips and tricks. So the way I thought I'd theme this and I only prepared this presentation, I'm actually on leave today, so I've come in just for this. Um, but I thought um, I'd kind of maybe, I just started noting a few things that I found useful when uh, I was at previous workshops and people stood up and said, well, this is what I did. Um, so I'd always had a list um, on my computer of things that I found useful from those. So I've kind of added a few and it ended up coming to 10. So you know, it could be like 10 commandments or something, but, uh, but maybe 10 tips and tricks. And again, I've tried to keep these general because I know that um, most of you aren't um, uh, teaching specialists. Um, and again, you've probably heard a lot of this before, so I'll go through it fairly quickly. Um, the first thing that was really important for me was just to print this checklist. I mean, it's a checklist for a reason, um, and it's on, all on one page. Um, there's a huge amount of info, a lot that you actually have to do. Um, you know, I first thing I did is print uh, a copy of this and I'm stuck it on my desk uh, in front of me. Um, I tried to memorise the checklist um, and then I printed another copy and then another copy and another copy and had one at home and um, kind of one in my bag that I'd carry to work so in case I lost the one at home there was one there because there are just lots of things that you need to do 
And um, it's easy to get caught out and forget something and then at the very last moment realise that there needs to be, for example, something about grant funding achievements. Um, and I also had this in front of me because it just, I think um, this whole process for most people takes longer than you imagine. Um, a couple of years ago, I remember being here when I was C going to D and there was a guy from chemistry who was here and I still have his presentation. And um, I think the previous speakers talked about the fact that you know, it will take you, you know, um, weeks to months to write it. And he stood up and said um, that, yes, it will take you a long time. And for him, he spent the Easter long weekend doing it, which for him was a long time. And then he finished it and then that was it. And um, that's so not the case for me. Um, it, it literally took me 12 weeks um, to write the application and not steady, you know, every day for two hours, but um, just to find the time every day, just to add a little idea to it and um, to write a new paragraph and just to synthesize some of the evidence and so it takes me a long time to write this I hate talking about myself it's excruciating so um, it, it just takes a while um, my second tip would be to skip uni Pascal and Phil aren't here um, so I can kind of say this but you know really um, how many of us have probably got those warning emails about annual leave which is why I'm on annual leave today people um, but this is actually, I, I kid you not, a photo that I took um, just down at Glenelg this time last year. Uh, and I actually remember because I sent it to a work colleague and said, look what I'm doing today. And uh, while well, I know she was stress marking tests. Um, <laughs> but really you just, you need time away from this kind of daily grind. I mean, there are 550 students in my class and you know, I can just be answering emails all day from now until the end of the year. And unless you actually take out um, some time, you just won't think about, um, about your application and you probably won't get it done and then you'll push it off into the following year. <coughs> Number three is just to meet your head of school or your boss, whoever that is. Um, my head of school is actually a male, but um, this is the only picture I could find. Um, the last thing you want to do is surprise your head of school. Uh, in uh, my head of school, so I'm from the Adelaide Medical School, uh, my head of school, um, or my school, the School of Medicine, Adelaide Medical School, is bigger, I think, than some faculties at this university. So you can only imagine how many applications a head of school um, gets. And I don't think they want to be surprised a week before the applications are due with a 25 page application. Um, in my case, I actually met head of school in PDR quite early on uh, in the year. And I just let them know kind of casually in the conversation that uh, and I have kind of just got level D, but I'm thinking of applying for level E and I kind of waited for them to kind of throw me out the office. But he didn't, um, he said, that's great. Um, maybe you should think about these things. And I did, and, and I basically said to him, look, I just don't know if I'll have the time to put together an application, but I just want to let you know that it's something I'm thinking of. Um, and then about a month before I uh, met with him more formally and for a longer period, uh, like an hour and a bit. And um, we kind of went through a draft of the application and he provided some really useful um, information which I incorporated into the final application. So some informal and formal meetings are good um, and really listen to them. I mean, like I said, he reads dozens of these um, every year. Uh, and I think your head of school, um, even if they're not on the panel, um, has a sense of whether an application is going to be strong or not. And they have to also write um, their, their bit as well. And I'm sure you've heard today to talk to successful colleagues, um, which is something that I um, also did. Um, this fourth point, taking charge of success, was in last year's presentation. So the person who spoke here last year, and it was something I just really stuck with me um, when I left um, the promotions workshop. Um, you know, we often ask ourselves, are we good enough? You know, I spent weeks thinking this, you know, am I really good enough even to get promoted to level B from level A? And, you know, we can just spend months and months and years and years wondering um, and asking people if we're good enough, or we can um, spend, 
you know, a few months putting together an application, collecting evidence, um, thinking about it and deciding for ourselves whether we're good enough to apply or not. Uh, and then taking that information um, to somebody like the head of school um, for their feedback. So, you know, take charge of your success. Um, be confident, but don't be um, cocky. Uh, and remember that you'll need plenty of evidence, which you've heard about um, non-stop today. So I'll um, go through this bit really quickly. Um, but obviously it's to showcase sustained um, excellence and to demonstrate your impact, uh, the, the significance of your achievements and their impact and influence, especially when it comes to level D and E. Um, so think about um, the way you've um, influenced people internally, so within your faculty, in the university, externally, um, nationally, and even um, internationally. If you can find little nuggets, um, you know, you just heard about invited presentations, all of that kind of stuff um, helps to demonstrate leadership. Um, at a national and international level. Um, you've, of course, heard about all of the different forms of evidence. This is actually a picture um, that I took a couple of days ago. Uh, it's just the bottom drawer on my filing cabinet. These are all the celts that we used to get when they were paper celts. Um, so I used to just stack them up uh, in there. And now, of course, they're all electronics. Um, but, you know, there's a huge amount of evidence um, in that um, giant um, stash of paper um, that I've used in um, various applications. So CELT scores, awards, um, for me it was learning and teaching awards, so I was lucky enough to receive a few of them. Um, there were some that I got after promotion, um, but I did mention in my application that I'd applied or was nominated or was shortlisted for various awards, so um, make sure you do that even if you don't yet know if you've won an award or not. Um, if you've been invited to give um, lectures, especially if they're international or seminars or workshops, put that in. Um, have you worked with other people, especially nationally and internationally? Um, PhD, master's students and the like. And are you sitting on various committees, like I said, and looking around and seeing professors or associate professors all around you and thinking, well, I should be at that level as well. Um, but I also just, if you've read my application, which is on the web, um, I do um, talk about other things in terms of evidence, and somebody mentioned YouTube views before. Um, but when I sat down with head of school, um, one of the things that head of school said to me is um, that I should actually create a table and um, share with people the number of um, views and downloads of the online resources that I've um, prepared. Um, as part of my kind of teaching portfolio because that demonstrates, I mean, it's right now it's over, uh, it's almost, back then last year it was I think 550,000 views and downloads. Um, right now it's 975,000. So it's a huge number of people around the world are accessing and using um, content that you've generated. Okay, and um, that's really important. That's what my head of school said. Um, you know, it, it's um, similar to, you know, um, the citation scores if you're um, publishing a paper. And also play with the data and look at it in different ways. So for me, um, again, you know, here's just your typical CELP that was in my um, application there. But um, one of the things that I've done for years now, ever since I started working here, is every, at the end of every year, I always kind of generate a series of graphs just to show um, how CELT scores for my um, course and for my personal teaching have kind of gone up and down. And I make a note of what it is that I did that particular year and how that might have influenced um, these CELT scores. And I also um, take all of the student comments and categorize, I'm crazy, and categorize them all under different headings, so assessment, um, lectures, labs, and it really gives me a sense every year of um, what the students, or how the students are responding and what they're thinking of some of the new initiatives that I'm um, testing with them. And, you know, I like to draw graphs of all of that just to make it easy for me to kind of analyze across, say, five years. Um, the effect that um, some of the things that I'm doing have had. Um, but this is, I just found this really useful. I don't know many people who sit and do it, but when you look at my application, there's a lot of 
um, these little bits of evidence here where I say something went up or down over five years and I've got data to prove that because I've done this analysis, this deeper analysis um, every year on my CELTS. And you know, it's confirmed um, what I thought but it's also offered a lot of new insights. If you're not sure um, that what you've done has actually had an effect, if you actually um, do the analysis you might find that it, it actually has and you've got some data to prove it. Um, again, just keeping it concise, I was reading some grants, um, some internal grants last week. I'm sitting on a panel reading those and um, some of them were just a, a joy to read because they were really clear and simple <coughs> and very focused. Uh, and some of them were so much harder to read because um, people were just jumping from one little nugget of information to another. Um, so, you know, keep it uh, simple. Remember the assessors are busy and so is the head of school if they're reading 50 of them like mine. So keep it simple and um, be really clear and focused about what story you want to tell. And telling a story is really um, important. Um, again, you can use tables, figures, graphs, headings, borders, whatever you want, just to break down that 25 pages. So it's not 25 pages of text. Anything that makes it help, uh, easier for busy people to read is important. Um, but you know, don't overdo it. One of the applications I was reading last week um, had every third sentence was bold, and um, you know, the bolding just loses its effect if um, everything's in bold. You know, if you've got a, a graph um, like that one, which actually is covered now, but actually showed um, a whole bunch of things, course numbers, um, CELT scores for personal and um, course. It showed the number of student enrolments, all in kind of one big table. It was just a really nice way of presenting that. I um, you know, if you're talking about when you've been invited um, to present um, internationally, why not show some pictures? And you know you can also um, use pictures to show um, some of the um, resources that you've created. Um, this Big Bang Theory point is just about kind of coming out all guns blazing. Um, this was a really early um, draft of um, my application. And this was the final one. And again, um, feedback from head of school. Um, you know, buried in all of this, there's some data here about the number of views and, and a whole bunch of things. Well, head of school just said, well, why don't you put that in a table and put it in paragraph one, how great your um, CELTs are compared to the university CELTs and how you've managed to kind of achieve that despite the huge drop in ATAR and massive increase in enrolments. So that's what I did. I put it in a table and it's uh, one of the first things that you see. Um, and also this data about the number of views and downloads from all of the online resources that I've developed. You know, don't bury it. Um, actually um, put it in a table and highlight that it's 565,000 views from, you know, 200 and something countries. So make it up front. Um, links and reflect. I googled links and this is what came up. I did spell it right, but I added a reflection kind of so that it matched the um, heading here. <laughs> Um, but this is really just about um, just asking yourself, is there an overarching narrative, you know, story to your application? Again, we don't just want a little bit on this and a little bit on that and a little bit on that and a little bit on this. And there's no, nothing to bring it all together. It's, it's got to read um, uh, like a well-connected story. So, you know, make links between the different parts of your application. Um, you know, for example, is there a scholarly or um, philosophical underpinning um, that's common to maybe your teaching and your research? So page one of my application has a kind of statement about my teaching philosophy and there's actually just three points in there in two sentences and they're the underpinnings to my entire application, the things that drove every element of my um, application and my teaching. Uh, number nine is just, again, your song. So, you know, what is your story? You, you kind of want, people don't want to read a 25 page CV. They've got your CV and it's what, three pages that it has to be. Um, you know, so don't just give um, the assessors a 25 page CV. Um, you know, give them a story. Tell them um, what excites you, what you're passionate about, um, what engages you. 
Um, I, I brought along here, because um, this is the first time ever that, um, so I applied for an Australian award for university teaching, which I was lucky enough to get last year. And the government doesn't normally provide applicants with feedback, but this year um, we actually got feedback, which was um, a surprise. And the very last um, line in my application um, said, additionally, the enthusiasm for teaching is evident in every page of the submission. I think that's really important. You know, people want to see that you're enthusiastic and excited and that you really love teaching or research or both. Um, and share your challenges and your opportunities, your successes and failures. Um, I think I do that in, at the start of my teaching um, portfolio talk about um, the awful start that I had to teaching. One thing I didn't put in there is the fact that I ran out of two lectures um, when they were just horrible and I hated them and I didn't want to be at university. Um, but you know, share those experiences and how you've learned lessons from them. And finally, just kind of keep calm and um, also keep cool. Um, I mean, I have this rule that um, when I'm angry, and probably a lot of you have a similar kind of rule, is when I'm angry or upset about something at the university, um, I always write an email about it, um, but I don't send it to anybody. I always sit on it for at least um, a day or sometimes um, more than that. Um, and I think probably once I've, I've sent an email off. Um, but you know, don't lose your call if um, it isn't successful. Um, it's not personal. You know, life is full of um, um, setbacks. And you know, it's actually um, not an easy thing to do to get promoted. Just because you've worked here you know, for 20 years, it doesn't automatically mean that um, you get promoted. Um, but it is important to kind of sit with the head of school. Um, and I actually did that even when it was successful, just to get um, some feedback from them about why they thought it was um, successful. Um, but if it's not, um, you know, put together a set of um, actionable objectives, things that you need to do to make sure that the next time you apply, um, it hopefully will be successful. And please don't do any of this, <laughs> you know. Um, don't get really angry at executive dean or head of school um, or um, Pascal or whoever the vice chancellor ends up being. Um, you know, stay positive. I know it can be a challenge, um, especially if you get some bad news. Um, you know, in that first um, month or so, but just continue working hard. Go to the beach, um, that will be useful. Um, and just continue to collect evidence and, and build and prepare yourself for an application the following year. Um, so, I, sorry if I um, took up too much of your time because you're running late. I mean, like actually um, Phil said, it's not really about luck, so I shouldn't have put good luck in there um, because if you're actually working at that level, then they should. Um, promote you to that level, um, whether it's D or E, but um, all the best. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, all right. <laughs>